Hello and welcome back to Snow Runner, y'all. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new truck from Z2. However, before we dive into anything truck related, I do want to go ahead and cover something real quick about the video itself. And that's essentially because all of the recording and editing for this is being done on a different PC. Now, my main PC, long story short, well, it decided to... Uh, in a lot of ways, decided to leave the chat. And in a primary way, that included the motherboard deciding it was essentially just not having a very good time anymore. However, before we get too deep into any of that, I mean, I'll probably make a separate post talking about the uh, computer issues themselves. However, let's talk about this truck. Now, this is a new truck by Z2, and it's based on a lot of the turbine powertrain trucks from the 1960s. However, this one in particular is a quote-unquote sort of fantasy truck, but it still has a lot of really cool retro-inspired details from that time period. Now, one of the things that I actually found to be really, really cool about this thing is the central seating position. Although I don't know if the central seating position would actually be that, like, I don't know if the seat would be that wide because it kind of looks like an oversized armchair. But of course, y'all can be the judge of that or rather the judges of that, um, depending on whether or not you do decide to use this truck. Now, one of the other things I liked about it was that you can really tailor it to any play style. And the Z2 trucks work very well for this because there's obviously parts that range from super vanilla and even in some cases, even lower capability than vanilla if you want to make the game harder. Um, or you can go all the way to the other end of the spectrum and make the game frankly, as easy as you want it to be with the ultimate Z2 tires and parts. But honestly, if you don't get this truck for anything to do with its capabilities and you don't even get it for its looks, I would honestly recommend even just giving it a download just to try it out so you can see the trailers because they are so genuinely incredibly cool. Now, one of the things that, I mean, obviously you're probably gonna notice that there's only two of them and you might think to yourself, well, why are there only two? Maybe there should be more. And to be honest, no, I, I'm like, the two trailers that you actually get for this thing kind of cover all of your bases that you're going to need. You get one that's a tanker and then you get another one that is essentially an enclosed flatbed trailer. I mean, it looks more like a van trailer, a box trailer, but this trailer actually has a really, really cool hidden secret because the entire roof opens up as well as the entire rear door, which turns into a loading ramp. So you can actually drive pretty much whatever vehicles you want up inside the trailer itself. And also, if you wanted to load it with a crane, you could 100% do that as well using these openings in the roof section. Now, for the purposes of testing, I decided to just go ahead and load it with one unit of long planks because that kind of, again, it will cover your bases of having a decent amount of weight in the back and also just not really having any kind of overload situation going on. Although, ignore the other unit of long planks because, um... How do I explain this? <laughs> Seriously though, like how do I explain this? Cause genuinely it's kind of wacky. So when I first went to record this video, I recorded it through OBS. Now, little did I know that the Elgato software and OBS and my laptop have some communication issues um, as opposed to using all of the same software on my main PC. And essentially the footage that I ended up with was pretty much a complete mess. And so I took that complete mess and I kind of was just like, yeah, I don't want this. I don't need this. And I got rid of it. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, we'll do the entire process over again. Now in the, in the process of doing the entire process all over again, I just basically re-recorded it in the main Elgato software. And in using the main Elgato software, it came out fine, which essentially just means that I have to entirely redo my OBS settings on my laptop. And then of course, fast forward to now, and we have this. Now I decided to go ahead and put the suspension in high mode before I drove off into the mud test, because let's just say 
that driving this thing in the mud is actually pretty gnarly for the type of truck that it is. Obviously, it's all down to these Z2 tires. If I didn't have these particular tires, it would not do anywhere near this well. So thank the tires for that because they're kind of doing all of the heavy lifting here. And I do want to make it entirely clear that I did try to go into the even deeper stuff, like the even deeper mud that you see over there on the left. And by going in there, I essentially just completely beached the tractor and it wouldn't go any further and regardless of whatever tires I had on the truck. So essentially, when it comes to mud, this thing is very depth limited. So if you're going to take it through some really ridiculous mud, you're going to be fine up to a point. Now, deep water, entirely different story. Deep water, you can, as long as you keep the snorkel intake above the water, I mean, as you can very clearly see, it just it, it doesn't care. It's perfectly happy to go submarine mode for you if that's what you need it to do. Now, I will say I enjoyed driving it a lot more than I thought I was going to, although I'm not sure that I would use it on a day-to-day -day kind of regular basis as one of my regular campaign trucks. And the only reason I say that is because the front overhang is so incredibly cartoonishly long that it just kind of gets stuck on everything. And when it gets stuck on everything, it's, uh, it becomes a little tricky to manage. But that did not stop me whatsoever from attempting to do this. And at the end of this, I hope that y'all will be as surprised as I personally was that I did not end up on my lid or roll over or roll onto my side or whatever the case may have potentially turned into. This thing actually has a really good con like amount of control over where its center of gravity is, and the body control is actually really quite good. But as we head into our next test, this actually brings me to a point that I wanted to talk about with this truck because every time I test trucks like this that are retro styled or just very stylistic in particular and aren't really based on trucks that people see every day, I always get a little bit worried for them because they almost always seem to go very underused by the game's community. Now, obviously, you could have a variety of theories as to why that happens. I personally think that it's down to recognizability because if you look at some of the most popular SnowRunner mods across the game's life cycle, it's almost always trucks that are hyper recognizable, right? And I think when you don't have that element of hyper recognizability, then people just generally don't gravitate to the trucks quite as easily. And honestly, as a great example, we can look at the SnowRunner mod browser right now as I'm recording this video, and we can sort it by what's trending across all platforms. And it's literally like right now, I'll go ahead and look at the top trending right now. It's literally two different versions of a, actually no, three different versions of a Ford F-350 it's a newer Chevy Silverado and a console version of a Nissan Patrol. And while those are all wonderful mods, they're all very well made, they're all incredible, I've driven all of them, it does kind of show how, in terms of the mods that seem to get a lot of attention, seem to get very popular, they all have to kind of rely on what people are used to seeing every day in the real world. And a lot of these more retro themed trucks or fantasy themed trucks kind of end up in an awkward situation because a lot of people don't see something super recognizable when they see them and so they end up passing them by for a vehicle that is more recognizable and again i understand that the super recognizable stuff is always going to be probably the most popular but it's kind of like, it's kind of sad in a way because it means that some gems like this may end up just going entirely overlooked by the community, sadly. But of course, since we are nearing the bridge jump and the end of the video, I do wanna hear from y'all out there in the comments. Let me know your thoughts, feelings, impressions, and or opinions about this truck. Will you be using it? Will you be passing it by? Let me know all of those thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. And of course, because this thing is a lot stronger than it looks, it actually handled the bridge jump really, really well. So with all of that being said and done, let me know again, any and all of your thoughts and opinions, and I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.